Hallelujah. Oh, go ahead, somebody. Let's lift him up today. Somebody ought to be shouting. Somebody ought to be clapping. Somebody ought to be running. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. My, my, my. (laughs) You're feeling what I'm feeling. I said you're feeling what I'm feeling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. The Holy Ghost is here today. Oh, my. In such a powerful way. God is in this place today. And you know, I don't think it's a problem with God knowing how powerful He is. I don't even think it's a problem maybe knowing, us knowing how powerful He is. We got to tap in to the power that we have. Let me tell you something. Hell trembles. I said hell trembles when Holy Ghost filled people begin to shout and lift up the name of Jesus. You better believe it. Jesus said, Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We're powerful. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got power. Woo. One scripture says, if one can put a, one to flight, uh, then two could put, or a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. I don't know about you, but that's pretty good mathematics in my book. I don't even want to know what would happen if you went out about ten times with that number. It gets up there where you're adding a lot of zeros because it's an exponential power. Where one is in agreement, there's power. Where two, there's amazing power. Where there is a room full of believers, there is exceptional power. Hallelujah. Glory. We just got to know what we got. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. My, my, my. Turn to your, uh, get your Bibles and turn with me to Mark chapter 5. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to be very sensitive to the Holy Ghost here today. While I'm speaking, teaching, I've already made the commitment and yielding to God. I said, God, whatever you want today, I don't need to speak. Whatever you need to do in this place, uh, God knows what needs to happen. Can you say amen? Amen. And I want to tell you something amazing. God saw this day when he created the worlds. We saw this day when we woke up this morning. God saw this day eons ago when he flung the stars into the heaven. He knew you'd be standing in this house today. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? The Bible says he knows everything. He knows what happened in the past, but he also knows what's going to happen in the future. David also said that you knit me in my mother's body. And before I ever took a breath, you knew every day that I would live. You charted every single day of my life. God knew I'd be here today. God knew you'd be here today. So surely, surely God knows exactly what you need in this service. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5. I'm going to read a familiar, a little bit lengthy. I am intentionally not leaving out a parenthetical uh, 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 position or or verses here that some might say, well, Brother Grayley, it's a a sidetrack, but I think it's important to the entire service content. And I think it's very important to where God would take us this morning. So I'm not apologizing. I'm just telling you we're going to read a little bit this morning. Mark chapter 5 verse 21 through 42 and the scripture says this. 
And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. Everybody, everybody say a ruler of the synagogue. Jairus by name, and when he saw him, meaning Jairus, saw Jesus, Jairus fell at Jesus' feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, <laughs> lieth in the point, at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him. Everybody say, Jesus went with him. Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now this, a little bit of a sidebar. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years. Now keep in mind, I want to contextualize this. Jairus comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, you got to come to my house. My daughter is nigh unto death. And Jesus says, let's go. But on the way, a woman shows up with an issue of blood. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be thinking, Jesus, come on. We'll get back to her later. We have an urgency here. Remember, you committed that you were going to my house. But the Bible says that a certain woman with an issue of blood, 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall behold. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she fell, felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself, that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Thou seest a multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touchest me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what she had done and was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now listen to this next verse. And I'm just going to say this. Right when you're thinking that God is ready to move, there could be a distraction. Now I'm not saying the woman, I've preached more about the woman with the issue of blood than I have Jairus. But understand, in Jairus' time frame, this was an interruption. God, I need a miracle. And now somebody else has got their miracle. And look at this next verse. Look at this. But the woman, or excuse me, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? You ever been there? Now come on somebody. God, I need touched. And you're in a service. You've been praying for 20 years. And somebody walks in that's been praying for five minutes and gets a miracle. Oh, come on now. Come on. God, I've been faithful. Lord, I got to you first. I was in line first. I had my number first. And somebody else came in, and now my daughter's dead. <laughs> as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, or the disorder, or the weeping, and the wailing greatly. And when he came in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, 
but sleepeth. And look at this. Do you know they were full of faith? Huh? They got behind him 100%. They said, Jesus, if you're here, we're with you. That's not what they said. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him, meaning the disciples, and he entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and he saith unto her, Talitha kumai, which being interpreted is damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Look at verse 42. And straightway, everybody say straightway. Straightway. Not a little bit, not an hour and a half later, not three days later, but straightway the damsel. <laughs> arose and walked, for she was the age of 12 years. And if they were astonished, and they were astonished with the great astonishment. I want to talk to you today and preach to us today about this. Hope, promise, miracle. Hope, promise, miracle. If you can lay your Bibles down, I want us to lift our hands one more time. And let's lift up Jesus uh, in this house today. Lord Jesus, we love you today. I bless your holy name. God, I felt your spirit from the moment I walked in. I felt healing. I felt anointing. I felt deliverance. And I felt power in this place today. Lord Jesus, I pray. Your word is anointed, uh, but I pray that you'll anoint my mind uh, and loose my tongue today that I can speak uh, what you would have uh, your people to hear today uh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Now, there are some things that in the scripture are not just implied. There are some things that are facts. I want to look at a couple of facts here today. One fact was that Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. Now, let me put that in perspective. Uh, you got to understand that it was the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, and the priests and the rulers uh, that ended up crucifying Jesus. Uh, oh, they didn't do it physically, but they demanded that it be done. So Jairus was hanging out uh, with a bunch of skeptics. But there was something in his heart. Uh, what are you saying, Brother Grayley? I'm saying this. Uh, it doesn't matter what your situation is. It doesn't matter who you have to be around. If you believe in your heart, uh, God will work a miracle for you. Can you say amen? amen? Jesus is here. Jesus is in your life uh, to touch you. You may say, Brother Grayley, I don't have a single person in my family or in my friend group from, from where I used to be that thinks that I'm okay. They think I'm crazy. Let me tell you something. There comes a moment in your life uh, when you have to take a stand, uh, when you have to say, I'm going to worship uh, and I'm going to live for God uh, come what may. I don't care what the skeptics say. I don't care what the neighbors say. I don't care what my friends say. I'm going to worship and serve uh, the Lord. Can you say amen? Jairus had to make a huge commitment. To, and let me tell you something. Sometimes desperation will force you to do some things you didn't think you'd do. And it's high time. We got uncomfortable a little bit. Listen to me just a minute. It's time we got a little uncomfortable in the way we're living. I'm not talking about holiness. I'm just talking about maybe some complacency on who we serve. He's God. Can you say amen? Fact number two, Jairus' daughter was dying. That's not a hearsay. It's not a rumor. It was a fact. He came to Jesus and said, Jesus, uh, if you don't touch her, she's dying. This is not one of those situations where she just feels bad. She's not just having a bad day, if you please. Uh, but this girl is on death's door. And Jesus agreed to go. You say, Brother Gray, I think that's relevant. 
So as you say, Brother Grayley, I at least had a commitment to, that God was going to take care of my situation. Let me tell you something. That's where it starts. And once it starts, uh, the rest is up to us to have the faith uh, to see it through. Can you say amen? And I promise you, you might say, I got a word from God three or four years ago, and I have not seen it come true in my life. Let me tell you something. On God's time frame, he is not sweating it. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I said God's not sweating it. That's exactly right. You say, Brother Grayley, it seems like that that promise that, that I felt I had and I knew I got it from God, it just has not came true. Let me tell you something. God is not slack concerning his promises. If God told you he was going to bless you, if God told you he had a ministry for you, that has not changed. What can change is a situation at the moment. And what we're required to do is to be faithful. I said we got to be faithful. Tyra said, oh my, my daughter's dying. You got to come with me. Jesus said, you got it. I'm there. Let's go. But wouldn't you know on the way, isn't that just the way it is? Right on the way to getting what you knew you needed that day, something happens. Now some of you, some of you have been trusting. And I'm here to let you know, God hadn't forgot about it. This is a word for you today. I said, this is a word for you today. God gave you a promise. God told you he was going to bless you. God told you he was going to use you. He's lining things up and making things happen. He ain't sweating it. He ain't worried about it. But what you got to do is be faithful. Because I see nothing in the scripture to where God does not every now and then. Just about every miracle you witness, uh, there's a little deviation just to check your faith. Oh, Brother Grayley, let me tell you something. God told Abraham, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Uh, you're gonna, your offspring is going to be like the sand of the sea and the stars of the heavens. But his wife didn't even believe it. The Bible says Sarah laughed. Uh, that's why Isaac is called Isaac. Iksak in Hebrew means laughter. Sarah laughed, said, are you crazy? Are you sure you heard from God? I am an old woman. I'll tell you what, I have a better solution, Abraham. Take Hagar and have a child. That must be what God wants you to do. Let me tell you something. Be very careful in your movement toward what God has for you. Oh, come on, somebody. This is good stuff. If you'll listen to this, God's going to bless you today. Let me tell you something. On your way to a promise, uh, there is an inclination in the human spirit uh, to say, I think I know what God wants to do, and since he's not doing it, I'll go ahead and move on it. Got to be careful. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to mess up. Because that is a time where God is preparing you. God is allowing you to learn a little patience. God is allowing you to learn a little bit of faith. God is allowing you to walk by faith and not by sight. If you could see it, it's not faith. It's not if God showed it to you on the big screen TV, it's not faith. Faith is saying God told me to pack up and go to a land that I've never been to before. Where are you going, Abraham? I have no clue. Well, you're a fool. 
No, I was just told to go, and God would show me once I got there. That's faith. If God would have said, Abraham, let's sit down. I'm going to show you how this is all going to work out. He didn't do it. That's not, that's not faith. Faith is saying, God gave me a promise. God gave me a hope. And I'm going to stand on it today. I don't care come what may, come any skeptic that may be in my life. I'm going to stand on the promises of God. And when we make up our minds, then God can move. But I promise you, it will not happen like you think it's going to happen. It never does. I mean, man, I've tried to work stuff out thinking, God, this is how it's going to happen. God's going to do this. He's going to line this up. And it never happened the way I expected it. But it happened. And God moved. And God blessed. Jairus, I'm going with you. We're going to make this happen. I'm giving you a promise uh, or at least some faith to work on that we're going to your house. But when you know it, somebody shows up. And after Jesus takes care of all that to make matters worse, here come the naysayers. So we got a distraction and now we got the naysayers. You ever have a naysayer in your life? Well, you sure that was God? Oh, man. I don't know about you, but people like that, I want to rebuke them sometimes. I, I'm, I'm telling you, you're talking about laying on some hands. I've been wanting to lay some hands on some people before like that. Man, you share, you got to be careful who you share your promises with. You better be careful who you share your gifts with. Because there are some people just don't get it. And I'm sorry, they just don't get it. And worse than that, they're naysayers. So here come the naysayers. Your daughter is dead. Your promise is dead. Your need, your ministry, your blessing, that very thing Jesus was going to take care of is dead. And they not only said that, look at the next statement. Why are you even bothering Jesus anymore? Go on home and weep with the rest of us. uh, And let's have a pity party. There'll be more people show up for your pity party than will ever show up for your celebration party. And that's the truth. You let some calamity hit your life, you get phone calls from people you didn't even know had your number. I've had it happen. I ain't never got a call from you before. And boy, they just moaning and groaning. Oh, I know you must be. Yeah, I am. I'm feeling pretty tough right now. But what I need somebody to show me and celebrate a little bit with me because I'm holding on to a promise uh, that God gave me. Yeah, I can tell you, man, the invitation list is long for the pity party. And it gets real short for the celebration party. I can prove it right here. Jesus shows up at the house. He looks at him. He moved from faith to a promise. He said, look, don't even listen to him. Don't even bother. Don't, don't, don't even pay any attention to him. Your daughter is not dead. Your miracle's going to happen. So they go to Jairus' house, and wouldn't you know, here are the pity party welcoming committee. I heard about your woes and your misery and I'm here to help you celebrate your misery. And I'll tell you why I know that they were false in their behavior because Jesus flushed them out. So somebody sincerely weeping with you keeps weeping with you. But the minute Jesus said, she's not dead, she's asleep. The morning turned to laughter. You can flush them out. I've done it before. Let me tell you something. Be careful who you hang around with. Be careful who you're sharing your ministry with. Uh, Be careful who you're sharing your gifts with. Uh, Be careful who you share your promises with. Because not everybody gets it.
Jesus said, okay, this is the way this is going to work. We're going to shorten the invitation list. I want the rest of you get out. The Bible says he put them out. And he took Peter, James, John, Jairus, and his wife. Five people. It went from probably 50 to five. He said, come with me. Here's what I'm telling you today. There is a progression in your walk. And if you think that in this lifestyle that we live, uh, that we can force God to move a little quicker than what we thought he, or, or what we think he should be doing, it doesn't work that way. But the one promise I can make you is that on schedule. I said on schedule, God is going to bring forth the answer to your situation and to that promise that he gave you. But you got to be faithful. You got to hang in there. You got to believe. And you got to feel, feel that God's going to do what he told you he would do. So Jesus walks in. And he says to the damsel, simply, damsel, arise. It doesn't take a lot of hullabaloo for God to make it work out in your life. There are people that want to make something grandiose out of everything. Let me tell you something. God has the answer to your situation, and he doesn't need a bunch of people around. He doesn't need the crowds. He doesn't need the throngs. God made you a promise, and God's going to fulfill that promise. It's up to us to stand on it. Can you say amen? amen. Has anybody out there got a promise today? Anybody out there got some hope today? Anybody out there got a little faith in this place today? I've been in this church and I've watched it grow. And I've heard us talk about we're going to have to move out some walls and we're going to have to blow out the other end. And I'll tell you, Easter Sunday morning, there wasn't any parking here. There wasn't. I mean, some, we're going to have to build a parking lot next door. We're going to have to do something. We may have to build a parking lot in layers, take advantage of the footprint we're working with. But we need a parking garage, maybe. But it's happening but let me tell you something. There were plenty of people that didn't see it and didn't even grasp it and I dare say didn't hang on to it. But there were a few. Go with me here. I said there's a few. There's a few that say, God, I know what you're going to do, and I know what your promise is for the North Charleston Apostolic Church, and I'm going to be a part of it, and I'm going to be faithful. And I'm going to fulfill my, your will in my life. Let me tell you something. Chips get down a little bit. Be easy to compromise. Chips get down just a little bit. You get some naysayers around you. You get some people saying, well, I don't quite understand what's going on. That's when you got to keep your eye on the prize. Can you say amen? I said you got to keep your eye on on the prize. You just got to look upward uh, and not downward. Uh, you got to keep your eye right on the target uh, that God has set for you. I've had many of you, some of you, I had my Sunday school class. Uh, I've had many of you come to me and say, Brother Grayley, God's got something for me. I know he does. Uh, and that may have been five, six years ago. But let me tell you something. God has not changed uh, that promise. God's going to use you. God's going to bless you. And I dare say God's promised some of you a healing. You say, Brother Grayley, I thought I'd get my healing last year. I thought I was going to get my healing the day I got the word and confirmation from God that I was going to be healed. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God is just lining things up and just making sure that everything's in place so that you can get the miracle that he has for you. I heard a black preacher say the other day, he said, you ever hear the scripture, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
He said, God's waiting for your enemies to show up just so he can bless you in their presence. I don't know. Some of you are thinking, Brother Gray, that's a stretch. I'm not so sure it is. Uh, David said, thou preparest a, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You can't even have a party until your enemies get there. You know why? Because God wants to show them what he's capable of. And then all that naysaying just kind of falls by the wayside. And all those people that said, you know, I don't see it, they don't see it. But God sees it. And what I'm trying to do today is cause you to wipe a little bit of that that, that murkiness away from your eyes. And don't allow that to happen to you. Do not doubt. I said do not doubt. Do not doubt. You hang in there. Don't you doubt. God's got something for you. God's got your miracle, Julie. God's got your situation taken care of. Uh, Don't you dare doubt. Now's not the time to give up. Can you say amen? As the musicians come. God's speaking to somebody here today. God has a touch. Somebody, God knew eons ago would be sitting here in this church today. God knew that you would need this message today. God knew you would be going through a little bit of cloud over the eye and maybe just a little bit of distraction in your life today. And he knew that you would need to be reminded to to hang in there. Because once you have a promise, uh, God will not let you down. Oh, come on. I said, once you have a promise, uh, God will not let you down. I feel him here today. Why don't we all stand together right now? Thank you, Jesus. Do your good work today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we raise our hands together just for a moment? Let's pray together right now. God is here. I said, God is here. And there's somebody that just this very morning got up and said, God, I just don't know. I just don't know. Is that really what you told me? Did I really hear from you, God? Because I haven't seen it happen yet. I'm here today to tell you, God is moving in your life today. 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 This is your day. This is your miracle. And this is your day. I want you to reach out as you had your hands raised, just like this, right beside of one another. Reach over and just take that person by the hand as their hands up in the air. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Look, I know I heard from God today. This message is for somebody in this service. And I'm not going to let a little imp from hell distract me today. I see people being blessed. 
I see people reaching out to God. I see tears running down cheeks today. Let me tell you something. God never makes a mistake, and he never makes a mistake in a service. This service is for you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I feel some promises awakening in this place. I said I feel some promises awakening in this place. I feel some promises. I hear the master saying, promise, arise. Get up today. We got to put some life back in that promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Uh, I, want some, I want one of the ladies, Sister Cindy Means, go back and lay your hands on Sister Tara. I want you to pray for her right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Every now and then that promise uh, looks like there's no life left in it. Uh, I said that promise looks lifeless uh, in our lives. Uh, and there are people standing around going, oh, see, it didn't work out. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to work out. Uh, but I'm telling you the difference in yesterday and the difference in today is that Jesus uh, showed up today. Oh, there's some of you been through some stuff. Uh, there's some of you been through some things you never thought you'd go through. There's many of you under the sound of my voice uh, that didn't think you would be standing where you're standing uh, just a few weeks ago. But God is saying to you, we're breathing some life uh, back into that situation. I'm speaking some life uh, back into that situation. And God's going to touch today. Oh. 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 Elders, would you help me out? Brother Almond, Brother Jared, some of the elders, would you help me out? Uh, I want you to be sensitive to God. I just don't want to shut this down haphazardly. I just want to make sure we're sensitive uh, to the move of God today. Hallelujah. Oh, you know you're feeling it. Uh, you know you're feeling what I'm feeling. Uh, there's a movement of God in this house. Uh, God's moving up and down the aisles today. Jesus is here today. You don't have to wait another minute. Uh, the Lord just showed up on your scene. You have brought me to such freedom. I have found in you, you're the healer. You make all things new. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's yeah. it.
such a freedom. Just a I'm going to ask somebody to make their way up in the balcony. I want you to lay your hands on our brother right up there in the balcony. Somebody needs to not let the restriction of those stairs take you up there. God is moving here today. There's some promises being resurrected. Uh, there's some faith growing in this place today. Let's go ahead and pray for one another.
Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. The presence of the Lord is working in this place this morning. Let's magnify the Lord. Let's lift him up in this place right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. the great apostle wrote to the Philippians in Philippians chapter number 3 verse number 13 when he says brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but he says but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are somebody shout behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before somebody shout there ahead of me He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I feel like this morning that there is a fresh move of the Spirit of Almighty God that is moving through this house. I feel like in the Spirit this morning that there is a fresh anointing for someone in this house. That the Spirit of the Lord is saying to someone this morning, it's time to put some things behind you and it's time to move forward. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that this morning. I said, I hear God saying that this morning. There's some fresh starts. There's some fresh beginnings. There's some, there's some new levels. There's some new places that the Spirit of God wants to take us this morning. If that's you this morning, would you lift your hands to God and declare, Lord, that's me. That's me you're talking about.
Let's magnify his name. Let's lift him high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I see victory ahead. I see victory ahead. I see greater anointings. I see greater moves of the Holy Ghost ahead. Come on. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Praise God. There has been such an overwhelming touch of God throughout this first part of our service this morning. But those of you that are accustomed to it know that we like to designate a part of our service to minister to the needs of those that may need healing in their body. They may have other situations going on. We believe that the Word of God tells us to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. We believe that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. We believe that laying on hands is God's way that He chose to impart things through the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're in this house this morning, you desire to be ministered to by the ministry. We're going to ask our elders to get ready to receive those that would have need of prayer. We want to pray for you this morning. We want to minister to you this morning. Scripture says that above all, he said, I want your souls to prosper. And I want you to be in good health. And I believe it's the will of God this morning that his people be healed. I believe it's the will of God this morning that people be filled. I believe it's the will of God this morning that people be set free. I believe it's the will of God this morning that the captive be set free. That the blinded eyes be open. That the deaf ears be open. Come on, anybody believe what I'm saying this morning? As these elders prepare themselves this morning, I'm going to ask our dear pastor to come out to lead us in prayer. presence of the Lord is here right now and all across this building I ask you to raise your hands and those of you that are full of the Holy Ghost I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now and let God do the work that he desires to do and create an atmosphere for the glory of the Lord to rest in this house that's it raise your hands and raise your voice right now in the Holy Ghost Itata robo ho soto robo ho sande yara baka sata yere da robo ho sata yara da 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 ba haya. Iyo robo ho sando robo ho siri yara da 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 ba hasete yere da 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 ba haya. Iyo robo ho sando robo ho siri yara da 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 ba ho soto robo ho sata da 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 ba haya. Come on, I need an apostolic man to raise his voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. I need an apostolic woman to raise her voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Itata raba kasoto robo ko sata yere 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 robo ho sata yere bahaya. The King of Glory is in this house right now. The King of Glory is in this house right now. Iya lambo ko soto robo ho sata raba hasete yere 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 robo ho sata yere 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 yere. Iya robo ho soto robo ho sande yere 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 robo ho sande yere 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 bahaya. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to stand to your feet all across this building with hands raised right now. Stand to your feet if you're physically able all across this building with hands raised right now. The presence of God is here right now and God desires to touch every need. God desires to minister to every heart. 
God desires to reach into every recess of the heart right now. And God desires to do a good work. God desires to touch you. God desires to minister you right now from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And I want you to raise your hands as high as you can raise them right now in the presence of the Lord. And say, God, I give you everything right now. God, I give you everything right now. God, I hold nothing back from you right now. I hold nothing back. God, I give you every hurt. I give you every pain. I give you every sickness. I give you every situation. I give you every distress. I give you every turmoil. That's it. Now with hands raised, I want you to raise your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Let desperation get a hold of you right now. Let desperation get a hold of you right now. God sees where you're at. God knows what's going on. You need to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. That's it. I want you to reach over and take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside. I want you to reach over and take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that's it. Reach over and take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside right now. And I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. The presence of the Lord is here right now. The help of the Lord is here right now. The touch of Almighty God is here right now. Let the Lord touch you. Elders, lay your hands on those that's come forward and let's pray for them right now. Believing God, believing God to touch, believing God over shadow. I'm dependent upon the Lord today. I'm dependent upon the Lord today. I'm dependent upon the Lord today. Uh, I can't live this life without the Lord. I can't do this without the Lord. I've got to have the presence of God in my life. I've got to have the presence of God in my life. I gotta have the presence of God in my life. I've got to have the presence of God. Lord, do your work in this house. 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 That's it. The power of God's on you. That's it. The glory of the Lord is on you right now. God, I declare divine healing right now. Lord, I declare a divine touch of the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, I have declared your presence to rest on your people. God, I lose the touch of the Holy Ghost on your people right now in the name of Jesus. I lose the touch of the Holy Ghost on your people right now in the name of Jesus. That's it. I want you to be led of the Holy Ghost. That's it. I want you to be led of the Holy Ghost. That's it. I want you to be led of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is ministering to hearts. The Lord is ministering to minds. The Lord is ministering to spirits. He is your help today. He is your help today. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray right now in the name of the Lord. God, we pray right now in the name of the Lord. God, we pray right now in the name of the Lord. God, we pray right now in the name of the Lord. God, we pray that you'd meet every situation. God, we pray that you'd administer every need. God, we pray that you'd strengthen. God, we pray that you would power right now. I pray a visitation of angels that come into this house. I pray a visitation of angels that rest in this house. I pray a visitation of all my God that come into this house. That's it, pray in the Holy Ghost. The Lord is doing that work. That's it, pray in the Holy Ghost. The Lord is doing that work. There's help coming to your home. There's help coming to your home. There's help coming to your home today. God, I receive that help. I receive that help right now. I receive that help right now.
That's it, Brother Dave, Sister Penny. You're in the will of God right now. There's some people of God that need the help of the Lord. There's some saints of God that need the help of the Lord. That's here today and those that aren't here today. I want you to raise your hands all across this building. And we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I want you just to let yourself go in the Holy Ghost this morning and let God do that work. The Shekinah glory of the Lord desires to fall in this house. Dave, Sister Penny, the power of God's about to rest on you. Elder Jared, come and lay your hands on Dave and Penny right now. There's a breakthrough coming in the Holy Ghost right now. There's a breakthrough coming in the Holy Ghost for you right now. I want you to raise your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. He When Elder Jared lays his hands on you, it's going to come on you right now. There it is right there. There it is right that's it, Sister Ann Davis. The Holy Ghost is on you right now. That's it, Sister Ann Davis. The Holy Ghost is on you right now. Father, I receive it today. Father, I receive it today. Father, I receive it today. Sister Crystal Bush, would you come? The Lord spoke to me just a moment ago that God wants to do something very special for you right now. Here in just a moment when I ask you to raise your hands, the touch of God is going to come on you right now and you're going to feel some things be released in the Holy Ghost. It's all over you right now. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. As you give it to God right now, God is going to refresh and God is going to renew and make whole of the body, mind, and heart, and spirit. Right now, raise your hands in the air. Saints of God, would you raise your hands? He talked about Sister Shauna, step on this platform when I tell you to. I want you to lay your hands on Sister Crystal. And the glory of the Lord is going to rest upon her and that which we need God to do. God's going to do it right now. Saints of God, raise your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost right now. This is the will of God today. This is the will of God today. This is the will of God today. Sister Shauna, lay your hands on her right now. Here it comes right now. Here it comes right now. Here it comes right now. A releasing right now in the Holy Ghost. A releasing right now in the Holy Ghost. A releasing right now in the Holy Ghost. God, I release right now. In the touch of God. I give you everything right now in the name of Jesus. Sunday, 
Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost right now. From so many of you, I feel a hunger and a desire and a longing to touch the hem of his garment. This is not for everybody today. You know who you are. There, I feel a moving in the spirit. There's something resting on men and women today that you're declaring, God, I'm tired of the norm. And God, I'm tired of the status quo. And you may say, Pastor, we haven't been having normal services here in status quo. But yet we can become comfortable in what we feel and become complacent and say, God, I don't want to press myself further. I don't want to move myself further in the presence of God and the Spirit of God. God desires through that hunger and burden that you have right now and that longing and that urgency you feel in the Holy Ghost to, to get a hold of Him and His power and might. That's what God wants to do right now. He wants to take you to a level in the Spirit. He wants to satisfy that longing and that desire and that hunger on the inside of you. You're about to find your place in a secret place you've never known before. You're about to see God in a way you've never known before. Julie, it's all over you right now. I want you to raise your hands as high as you can raise them, Julie. God desires. Sister Janice, lay your hands on Julie right there, right now. That's it. God sees your hunger. God sees your searching. God sees your longing for him right now. If you're here right now, my brother in the brown jacket, I want you to come. My brother in the brown jacket. Saints of God, raise your hands right now. Brother, it's all over you right now. That's it, it's all over you. I don't even have to lay my hands on you because you responded to the man of God and the presence of God. It's falling on you right now. From the top of your rabakasa. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. God is responding to hunger. God is responding to desire. God is responding. Brother, when I lay my hands on you, there's a touch of God going to come on you right now. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet, God has heard your prayers and God is about to move on your behalf. God, I declare right now in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, a touch right now. Oh, come on, you ought to clap your hands and give God praise. You ought to clap your hands and magnify. Come on, clap your hands and glorify Him. If you have what I'm talking about right now, I feel, I feel on a lot of you, there is a moving in the spirit. You, 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 you feel something moving. On the inside of you. It's like something being birthed on the inside of you. I've come to tell you this is the day, this is the hour that God is going to bring about that which he needs to bring about in your life. And it's because of your hunger and your desire and saying, God, I'm forgetting who's on my left and I'm forgetting who's on my right. And I'm forgetting who's in front of me and behind me. God, I need you. God, I need you this day. And I'm not leaving this house until you bless me. I'm not leaving this house until you touch me. God, I'm tired of being the way that I've always been. And God, Rabba Sunday, Yadaba Kasata, Yadabahaya. And God, I'm tired of doing the things I've always done. But God, I need a greater touch of you. If that's your heart and mind and spirit, I want you to step out of your pew right now and make your way down that aisle and to the front of this auditorium with hands raised. Rabba Sunday, Yadabaha. Christy, it's all over you right now. He tata, Boko Shata, Yadabaho Sandayala. He rebe siti, Yaboko Sanda, Yadabahaya. Ha ha ha. Jada, come here. Jada, come here. Jada, come here. He ta 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 ta. Come here. He ta 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 ta
I want you to raise, we're going to pray for you in just a moment, but I want you to raise your hands toward Jada right now. The Lord is about to move on her. The Lord is about to touch her. Jada, you're feeling the power and the presence of God like you've never felt before in all your life. God is about to take you into a realm and dimension you've never been before, and you're about to be changed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Are you ready for God to do that? You're about to get lost in the Spirit of God. I believe you're about to get drunk in the Holy Ghost, and God is about to reveal himself to you. When Elder Grayley lays his hands on you, I want you to receive what God has for you right now. Raise your hands, and Elder Grayley's going to lay his hands. When he feels prompted, he's going to lay his hands. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now for Jada. God is about to do that work. Come on, raise your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Raise your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. There it is. It's about to come on you right now. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's about to come on you right now. I loose it on you. I loose it on you. I loose it on you. That's it right there. That's it right there. That's it right there. That's it right there. He have a whole Sunday. Rubble for so cold. I want you. Here's what I want you to do. Those of you that's come to the front, Ariana of the Holy Ghost is all over you right now, youngin. He tatai. Yapo soto. Rapa satai. Even our children under the power and the presence of God. Even our children under the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. I want a lady to turn and find another lady right now that's come to the front of this auditorium. I want a lady to find another lady right now. And I want a man to find another man right now. And I want you to stand right in front of them. Stand right in front of them. Look at them right square in the eyes. Stand right in front of them. Look at it of us, Steph. God has something very special for you right now, Stephanie. Raise both your hands in the air right now, Stephanie. Mama, lay your hands on her right now. Mama lays his hands on her. That's it, receive right now from the Lord. That's it, receive right now from the Lord. There's a renewing coming right now. There's something being birthed on the inside of you right now that's forever going to change your mind, forever change your heart, forever change your spirit. There's a change coming right now. There's a change coming right now. I want you, those of you that's standing in front of somebody, I want you to lay your hand right on their forehead and I want you to speak the word of faith and I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. There's a change happening in the hearts and minds and spirit of the people of God. There's a touch of God coming to the people of God. That's it. Let your faith go. Let those tongues go right now. Have the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus. I loose it now in Jesus' name. Wally, lay your hands over the bread and pray for the bread. For the bread, Wally. Wally. That's it, the glory of the Lord is your help. That's it, the glory of the Lord is your help. That's it, the glory of the Lord is your help. Uh, that's it, Joe. The Holy Ghost is on you. That's it, Joe. The Holy Ghost is on you. The Holy Ghost is on you. Daniel, be used of the Holy Ghost right now. He talked about Sunday. That's it, Brad. The Holy Ghost is on you right now. When I lay my hands on your Brad, the touch of God is going to come right now. Just get loose in the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus. When I lay my hands on you, the glory of the Lord is going to come right now. A fresh anointing is going to fall on you right now. He got a whole Sunday. That's 
the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I receive that divine touch of the Holy Ghost. I receive that divine miracle. I receive that divine need. I receive that divine touch right now in the name of the Lord God.
tonight and sing it. Oh, raise your hands and sing it this morning. Oh, do you long for the glory of the Lord? Do you long for the glory of the Lord? Do you long for the glory of the Lord? Do you long for the glory of the Lord? God, we long for it. God, we long for it. God, we long for it. We long for it. Sing it again. Sing it again. Sing it again. Sing it again. Brother David, I want you to come. The Lord is about to use your brother right now. God knows what you need right now. When Joe, the Holy Ghost is on you right now, Joe, when Joe lays his hands on you, you're going to feel a touch of God come to you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Saints of God, raise your hands toward David right now. And I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. And on the count of three, Joe, when I tell you to, I want you to lay your hands on your brother and pray in the Holy Ghost. You tapped into something today. There's a change that's happened to you. You feel a fresh anointing on you right now, Joe, when I tell you to lay your hand on your brother. And together, both of you are going to go there in the Spirit. Both of you are going to go there in the Spirit. Get ready to receive right now. David, one, two, three. Lay your hands on him right now. Lay your hands on his forehead right now. That's it right there. That's it, Father, right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, that's it, pray of the Holy Ghost. 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 Tommy, I want you to come. I feel a hunger on the inside of you. Stand right here on the platform. Matt, the Lord's going to use you right now. He taught that. Stay right there. It's all over you right now. My God, it's all over you right now. You feel it. God's about to take you to a dimension to commune with Him like you've never communed before. And today is a new day for you. Today is a new hour for you. You're about to feel the power and presence of God just beyond the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But I'm talking about the Holy Ghost and fire. There's a difference. The fire of God's about to fall on you right now. Matt, lay your hands on him right now. Say to God, raise your hands over Tommy right now. There it is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday, yeah, a change, a change, a change, a change, a change, a change, I loose it on Brian right now. I loose it on Brian right now. He tied Rabba Kosata. He read his son, no, 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 Oh, ushers, get 
Lord, sing with everything in you. He have a whole shot. Yeah, that as we give today to the work of God I pray that divine favor I pray that divine blessings and provisions will come to the people of God as the man of God and by the authority that invested in me as the man of God as I stand on the word of God I lose blessings and provisions and declare them now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may it come to their home now in the name of the Lord as they give to the work of God today, as they release that offering from their hand, God, I release from your hand the blessings and provisions of Almighty God to rest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone shout, it's done in Jesus' name. Come on, shout in faith, it's done in Jesus' name. Shout, it's done in Jesus' name. Sing as you give today in closing. Oh, yes, God. That will ever Can compare your 
chwala Bogu, Like being in his presence, and he's here today. I love you, Lord. 